Greetings and welcome to the Stone Builders Hour with Pastor Gary Montgomery and my lovely wife, Elder JC. We're in the house this Thursday. Welcome, 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 podcast and radio family. We are so excited to be here. And remember, Pastor, we only have 30 minutes. Yeah, 30 minutes. <laughs> 28, uh, 5. <laughs> boy, I, I tell you, uh, last week, oh, I better get going. Uh, my, my heart is on fire, you know, with all the things been going on. But yes. we discussed the cancel culture last week and the effects on Christians in our community and how the devil, that deceiver, yes. is on a rampage enjoying his fruits of chaos there's no simple answer to violence in the u.s but i can tell you this we have left the almighty god out of the picture you're right you know doing some research and found that fritz cherry he states from bible reasons that we are not exposing evil as believers as believers, we are under a mandate to, to expose evil, and evil abounds. And let me just point out, it's not about we can't judge people, because I know people be throwing that in, you can't judge me. Yes, we can judge according to the word of God. You know, everybody, right now, there was a gun violence in Uvalde, yes. Texas, uh, where there was a shooting where oh, children and teachers have been uh, killed. Oh, Lord, we just pray for uh, the the families yes. who have lost their loved ones. Uh, we we just, oh, God, boy, <laughs> I'm speechless right now. And everyone wants to stop gun violence or make laws to cancel like automatic rifles and and pistols and handguns and special scopes on your guns and make it harder to get them but current laws on the books are having no effect at all you know because uh, if you want a gun you get a gun and 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 we went through that process and even going through the process we had to have a background check we had to follow the law mm-hmm. of man so what is how is it that other people aren't following the law? Yeah, and plus uh, we sought special training. Yes, uh, for to be able to conceal carry, and also we want to be able to be responsible uh, gun owners. Yes, and uh, and we take it very seriously because it's a it's a truly a tool uh, that uh, that uh, we see it as as a tool. But everyone they want others to stop gun violence and make laws and always want to make it harder to, to, for people to get, but really it's no effect. This having no effect at all. And remember we are moving more towards evil in my opinion than Jehovah. Cousin Genesis six, five says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Oh, God, when you created man, I know you had so much hope. High hopes. For, for him. And then as soon as he turned... You, you know, you just turn your back, do what God does, do what Jehovah does. <laughs> and next thing you know, Adam and Eve, they end up sinning. And that just invited a whole lot of evil that's been passed down to this day. Even after the flood, he wiped out everybody. And then here it comes back again. But just imagine, this is the beginning of Genesis. We're not even talking about being out of the gate yet. And we're already on God's worst side. But you know, Deuteronomy 27, 25 states, Curse be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. And I know everyone's running around now and trying to say, well, why did he go to the school? Why did he do this? Why did he kill all those innocent folks? But whatever was going on in his mind, it's obvious that there was more to it than just 
him stopping at the school. And remember, the incident that just happened, we just got over. Buffalo. Yes, with the grocery store incident. And here again, ruthless, Mm. unnecessary violence. And we talk about, boy, I mean, is God really in the picture in America? I mean, we're supposed to be the American way. We're supposed to be the Christian nation. But somehow we're losing the battle with how people believe. We can, People can't say anything anymore because everyone becomes defensive or takes offense at what's been said. And really, do we need more laws? Yeah. About obeying the ones we have on the books. Do we need more background checks? Because would that really, he turned 18 and apparently he was happy because he could go buy a weapon. And most of us think of like handguns or something like that, but he wouldn't brought an AR-15. And I know that's the one weapon of choice that people are talking about trying to take off the market. But whatever we're doing is not enough to stop people from getting what they want. But we don't know what the heart of the matter is. But I feel part of that heart is where is his parents? Because he was living with his grandparents. And before he got to the school, he shot his grandmother. And she's still hanging on by thread. So whatever... You she's know, still alive now? she's still alive, but apparently in critical condition. But whatever it was riled him up to the point of he had to go out and do something. And we don't know what is going on in his mind or his household, he's right? Under, yeah, whether he was trafficked, whether I mean, all the things that we see in our ministry, both on a good and and on an evil standpoint, we don't know what our children are being exposed to. On the internet, yeah, on the game, which is a biggie. It's deep, what is? Is it called the dark web? Yes. There's so much stuff that's going on that we don't know what's happening in the rooms when the, the lights door, go out. The lights go <laughs> off and the doors are shut. But you know, today I believe a lot of people don't want to take responsibility for what they do. You know, it's about the blame game. Let's uh, blame the Democrats versus the Republicans. Let's blame the blacks versus the whites. Let's uh, blame Christians versus uh, non-Christians. Let's blame the Muslims. And, you know, it goes on and on ad ad nauseum. You know how it is. And it's it's funny because when I think of the children we used to work with, that was the first thing they would do. If something would happen, not me, not me. In fact, I used to tell my kids that that, that there used to be an extra person living in our household, and his name was not me. <laughs> so just as innocent as children do that, so we as adults do it. But the problem is children and our innocent are vulnerable to this. Could you imagine the next day explaining to your kids why this happened? Why your friend got shot or what you saw with your own yes, eyes? The trauma. Yes. And that, you know, I know they're going to have counselors, grief counselors and all that. But there are so many, I think there's like five stages of grief. Yes. That's unacceptable for a child to have to go through. Not only are they vulnerable, they get damaged because now what has stirred up in them uh, evil that something like this could happen later in life. And then the worst scenario, they get killed. We are exposing our children to some, to me, just unconscionable acts that we don't need to be exposing them to. That's definitely true. And you had mentioned uh, about uh, evil and how no one wants to take responsibility or everyone's waiting for someone else to take responsibility. But people are confused. You know, Christians are confused. How on one hand, last night I heard the the president uh, talk about how he was so angry, so mad that that uh, God will allow this to happen. 
But on the other hand, you're allowing abortion to happen. Yes. So on one hand, you're saying, mm. save the children. God loves the little kids. We'll save these kids, save the kids. But then on the other hand, you're saying that uh, that uh, the, the, the Supreme Court says that, you know, if they reverse Wade versus Roe or Roe versus Wade, then it's a bad thing that's going to happen uh, because abortions won't be able to take place. Now, we know there's certain circumstances, certain situations with abortion and, and things of that nature. We, our office was next door to an abortion yes. clinic. So we, you can't tell us anything for three years where our office was at. So we know that when we've seen the women coming into the abortion clinic, we've seen the men out in the cars uh, waiting for, uh, for them to come out. We've seen the lack of support. We've seen the demographics of all those things. But you're saying that one moment you want God to, to curse this, but then you want him to bless over here. So what are you to do as a believer and as a, as a Christian? That's why we, we talked about cancel culture. Yep. And and we're showing that Jehovah, we're showing to Jehovah that we don't want his presence here. Mm. And hence the cancel culture, which is to erase or to neutralize or to equalize or offset whatever gains that we receive today is now going to be forfeit. And that's why in Isaiah 520, he says, woe unto them that call evil good mm. and good evil that put darkness that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter lord we need you exposing evil is necessary to make us aware of what is lurking for our children and youth not only for them but as as young men and women Evil is waiting around the yes, corner for it us is. To, to stumble and fall. The Almighty expects us believers to call evil what it is. It's evil. That young boy, regardless of his situation, created yes. an evil task to go into a school, not only shoot someone who raised him yes. but to cause chaos and create trauma and tragedy by taking the lives of not only 18 or 19 children but teachers who were there in such a vicious we just gotta call evil what it is that was evil in James 4.4 4, he states yet adulterers and adulteress Know ye not that the friendship of the world is into me with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Mm. And, you know, uh, one of the things when you talk about that, a lot of times there's undercover acts that happen. Mm. And uh, John 3.20 says, everyone who does evil hates the light. And will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Sometimes we're doing things undercover and we're wondering, well, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Um, we always talk about, I know we were always honest with our children that if anybody bothers you, bothers you or touch you or do anything to you, you come to us and I will believe you. Because that's part of our problem as parents. We're not having that interaction with our children on a regular basis. That's right. And so a lot of times they're keeping things under wraps because they feel like, oh, I can't say that. I can't say this because the person told me if they if I say this, they're going to hurt my parents. Or if I say this, they're going to hurt me. Or if I say this, I'm wrong. And we have to be vigilant. Hmm. I mean, we have to be on top of these things. Do you know how maddening this world is right now for our children? We have to. They are totally confused. I mean, just a little thing like having a law that they did in Florida to stop kindergartners from professing they were trans. How does a five, tell me, how does a five-year-old make a decision when he doesn't even know whether he want a Big Mac or... <laughs> 
<laughs> chicken or, nuggets. Or go pot. <laughs> right. Oh. So that is what we as believers and truly believers who are adults should be about. First John two fifteen through 17 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Oh, money. Yes. Cars. Prestige. Fast housing. Pride. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, that's what's going on. And the pride of life is not of the Almighty, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and so will the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Oh, I got to say this before. Go ahead. Go ahead. I wasn't going to say too much, but when I saw that scripture, you just read first John two fifteen about the, uh, about the lust of the flesh. We've had uh, a representative uh, Ramon Alexander out of Tallahassee um, district five. We've did a number of farm shares for him. Well, he's not running for the next term because of his lust. Here's a married man with children lusting after men. So much so that he wanted to engage in sexual activity in his state office building. And he said it through text. They have evidence and proof. And here no one is saying anything. That was an evil task. Now I'm concerned he runs a youth male Program. ministry. How many of those young men have been exposed to his proclivities? Now here, um, I know I, I, I'm going to be thrown under the bus behind this, but I'm not. I'm speaking out about evil. That was a he was a liar. He lied to his wife. He lied to his constituents. He lied to all of us. Yeah, because he was pre- saying that he was one thing, but in darkness he was another. Well. Huh? He was living a lie and had us looking at his life as the life that you want to be. But he is in. He was undercover and yep. having people follow him. And he's not the only one. Yeah, there's a whole. Slew there's of Andrew them. Gillum, his other men, other people who have been living a lie. But you, and that's why you're not supposed to look up to man you gotta look up to god yes because men will let you down always yep well you said it in isaiah 520 woe unto them that call evil good and that's what's been happening and no one wants to call them on the carpet well ramon alexander you are evil you need to repent ask for forgiveness and sin no more all right. It ain't about us. You ain't got to be pleased me or anything. You need to get with your maker and ask for forgiveness with your maker. And that all goes about evil. You got this young man here. You got the people in Buffalo. This young yes. man killing people in Buffalo. He had this thing planned and found out about this dark web. I don't even know how to get on the dark web. But don't watch it. Folks. But they're finding, well, just recently, there's a young girl went to a basketball game who's 15 years old down in Dallas, made a go to the restroom and never returned with her father from the playoff game. And then two weeks later, they find her in Oklahoma City being traffic. Evil got to stop. We believers got to start standing, standing up, up. Yep. Speaking yep. out and calling evil what it is. Yes, we do. So we, we, we got to come back because pastor's on a roll. Oh, my <laughs> fire. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. But we're going to come back and really ask the question how do we overcome evil mm. we'll be right back what you gotta do call on the lord he's gonna help you when you're wasting hot if you wait if you wait on the lord he will bring you out he will bring you out if you wait Greetings. 
I'm Pastor Gary Montgomery, co-host of the Stone Builders Hour with my lovely wife, Elder JC. We thank you for listening to Living Stones Radio Ministry and invite you to become a sponsor of the Stone Builders Hour for as little as $25 monthly. Your sponsorship is tax deductible and can be made on our secure website, welivingstones.org. Just click on the donor button and become a partner. It's that easy. We want to thank you for your support and God bless each and every one of you. (laughs) Welcome back. Welcome back to the Stone Builders Hour with Pastor Gary Montgomery and my lovely wife, Elder JC. Her name is Josephine Celeste Gamboa Montgomery. All right. Well, That's a you, mouthful. <laughs> yeah, she's an awesome woman of God. She, I mean, I brought her kicking and screaming. Oh, not so much kicking and screaming, screaming. but she I'm was scratching like, my head. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we moving to Durant, Oklahoma on this farm? You know, and <laughs> it's like the farm. You got a city girl. Uh, a project yeah, true, <laughs> true 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 see a project chick and now she's on a farm in these late ages and she she's ready to be up in the hotel with the manicures and all this and now all she got is dirt underneath her oh it just won't come out <laughs> yeah but sure won't but like uh, our like our oldest daughter jamel said she couldn't live here because there's no street lights i i understand <laughs> <laughs> But we just, we, we love the Lord and you can't do anything about it. And we just ask that you support the Stone Builders Hour, which is hosted by Living Stones International. That's the ministry that we've been able to oversee for 16 years now. What a blessing uh, the Almighty has done. And you can become a stone builder by joining us by yes. going to our website, www.welivingstones.org and become a partner of ours. And, 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 and we welcome you. We welcome you because we need you to stand in the gap with prayers and supplication and find ways to help overcome evil. Yes. And it starts right in our household yes, around us by teaching your children, by conversing with each other, your brothers and your sisters, your mama and your daddy. And the people in your community, because Galatians 5, 20, 23 says, idolatry, witchcraft, mm. hatred, mm. variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envying, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such a like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, Mm. but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So we know how to overcome evil, but... We must do it Jehovah's way. Yes, that is so way, true. But his way. Yes. It's interesting that you uh, read Galatians 5.20. Because one of the things that we continue to do is we look at this life as all there is. Mm-hmm. This is temporal. Yes. There's coming a point where it's going to be everlasting. Oh, and God. I'm sorry, I have to say it again. Lord, I want to be in that. Number. It's only 144,000. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> the 12 tribes of Israel. But mm. as you look at what's going on in the world, mm. see, before I used to scratch my head, well, that's not a lot of people. But when we see evil mm. overcoming good, that's not too far fetched. James says it best, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and su- superfluity of naughtiness. Wow, <laughs> that's a word. That's a <laughs> and receive with meekness the engrafted word, 
which is able to save your souls. We have to remember we're fighting. We are spiritual creatures. We are only ambassadors to this earth. We're supposed to be doing all that we can to give glory to God so we can return back to our heavenly ways. Because I know this is not the way that I'm supposed to be. Yes. And ever. For eternity. Yes. Pastor and I say this on most of our talks with you. Follow God and his commandments to avoid evil and walk in righteousness. So how we overcome evil is staying in God's word, reading it, diving into it, clothing it, breathing it, uh, you know, just everything in it. Because even, yes, even Peter in 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9 says, and beside this, giving all diligence Add to your faith, what? Virtue. Mm. And to virtue, what? Knowledge. And to knowledge, what? Temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in, and I'm going to put myself into it, in me. Yep, make it personal. And abound, they make me that I shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Yes. But he, or if I say me, that lacketh these things, I'm blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from his own sins. Mm -mm -mm. I tell you, that's why we do not feel in control. But when the tragedy in Uvalde, uh, Texas happened, we feel helpless, especially when it affects our children. And according, I'm going to say this real quick, according to NPR, a national public radio. No, I won't go there. There have been 27 school shootings so far this year. Wow. Only the big ones we hear about, but uh, there's a couple in around this area. Yep, that Houston. Young yep. kids taking guns to school. But according to the Gun Violence Archive, which is an independent data collection organization, there have been 212 mass shootings this year. It is defined as an incident in which four or more people were shot or killed, excluding the shooter. Even ending in 2021, mass shootings number 693 per the Gun Violence Archive. The year before was 611, and in 2019, there was 417. Looks like God left the planet. Yes. And we as believers are also not doing such a great job in connecting the Almighty to ourselves as we should. Well, one of the things, Pastor, I know we're coming to a close, but it is our lack of maturity to see that evil is taking over the world, Mm. not just people, but evil. And the devil's having a big party. And until God returns, there will not be any relief because when he comes back, Uh oh, there's going to be some. Blood Slice spilled in Dyson. <laughs> then there will be peace and a new reigning king. Mm. Pastor? Well, I tell you, we pray that we begin to bring ourselves back to the Almighty God, as in Second Chronicles 7 14. Yes. It says, If my people, yes. which are called by my name, yes, shall Lord. humble themselves yes. and pray and seek my faith face and turn from their wicked ways, Ramon Alexander, then will I hear from heaven and will give, forgive their sins and will heal their land. Forgive me, Lord, for calling out people like it is for my passion for you, Father. But you said we got to expose evil. Yes. So I ask that you bring an awakening of your presence as never seen before. And we ask that your name be proclaimed, that all plans to silence the name of Yeshua will be thwarted and crushed. 
JC and I pray that many would come to know you as the Lord and Savior. And we pray that many would see your light, that you would open blind eyes and release those still in prison. All right. Well, oh, go. tune in next week because it's going to be exciting. Uh, do we need to go back to an hour, folks? No, we're hey, write us. Write us at go to welivingstones.org and uh, send us a text or write us and above all uh, become a stone builders partner all right see you next week god bless